Hello folks. So we have now had a look at uh, various forms of random network models, in particular static random network models and a series of growing models. And the growing models enriched things and allowed us to fit some data and get a, a first look at degree distributions and fitting nodes. Um, but now we're going to look at another class of models which are known as ergoms or um, exponential Use my handwriting, random graph models. Okay, and that uh, that idea will become clear in a moment. So we looked at these variations on uh, you know basic models, which gave us some starting features, but missed things like clustering and, and basic features. We had these other link-by-link -link models, which captured other features, clustering, degree distribution, got some correlations in degrees, and so forth. Um, but there's a very popular set of models that's exponential random graph models, and there's sort of two reasons that they're popular. One is that they inter allow us to introduce various local features, so not just getting some clustering, but actually allowing you to, to put in cliques of four or cliques of five. So when we actually look at social networks, they tend to have very tightly knit um, local social structures and they can have richer things, there can be stars, local uh, hubs and things which differ slightly from what you see in some of the other models and they can have richer um, structures beyond just triangles and we might want to capture some of these dependencies. Um, there also might be things like isolated nodes which, which aren't generated by some of these other things. Um, so that's one reason. And the other is that these can, uh, they're a well-defined statistical family of models, and there's a lot that's known about the exponential family. And we can then take those to data and, and actually try and estimate things and do statistical estimation to say, um, is, it, uh, is, it, is a given social network exhibit a statistically significant number of triangles? Is, is, is this really different from uh, not seeing any triangles at all? Okay, <clears throat> so these models, um, just in terms of historical background, they've been called Markov models, they've been called P-star models. Um, now they're best known by these, the known exponential random graph models, or ergoms for short. And uh, the, um, the, the, again, the, the, the previous models were not great at fitting data, so we, we did manage to do some things with the growing random network models, and in particular the hybrid models. But more generally, if we want local dependencies, we might want to enrich the model in a different way. And in particular, what we want to allow is that a given link ij, we want that probability of that link forming to depend on things like whether um, they have a friend in common. So it, are j and uh, i both related to k? So can we form triangles in that way? Um, the difficulty is once we start putting in interdependencies between links, then it begins to mean that everything ends up correlated. So um, things are going to start interlocking, and given that, that one link is dependent on its neighbors, and its neighbors could be dependent on it, then, then we're no longer dealing with a system with, of independence, but we're dealing with a system where now we've got a huge amount of, of correlation in the structure, and um, we have to really keep track of all that, and that is going to be a challenge. So um, let's start by just looking at a, a simple uh, example of this that's been studied uh, fairly extensively in the, in the literature um, by, by Strauss originally, Park and Newman, Chatterjee and Diaconis have looked at it. Um, and so the idea is that uh, you know, we'll, we'll allow the um, probability of a network to depend on how many links are present but we also want to make sure that we allow for some clustering and in particular um, we'll have that the probability of network will depend on how many triangles there are. So instead of just uh, you know, it, a, a network that has the same number of links but has a different number of triangles could be more or less likely than one that has say more or fewer triangles. So the idea here is that triangles could be either favored by the model, so maybe nature likes to arrange people in triads or doesn't like to, um, depending on the particulars of the model. But um, this is an example where we'd like nature to care about that in the formation process. 
Okay. So the likelihood depends on node attributes, and it also, for instance, could depend on whether they have friends in common. And so we might want uh, these triangles to be more more prevalent than uh, if we just had an Erdos or any style network. Okay. So let's just think about writing down a model like this. So now, for instance, we would, might want the probability of such a, a network, so a probability of a network G, to depend on how many links it has and how many triangles it has. And a simple form of that would be to say, okay, well, maybe the probability depends on some factors times how many links it has and how many triangles it has. Okay, well, the difficulty is if we, if we wanted to not like these things, if we want negative parameters here, then that might not add up to, to be a probability. Um, so in order to uh, have this, have a nice functional form, um, the tendency is then to write this as an exponential of this, which is then always positive, right? So we'll let the probability of, of a given network be proportional to um, an exponential function of uh, weighted sum of how many links it has and how many triangles it has. And that is a very nice functional form. There's a lot of mathematics that's known about ex uh, this exponential family. So now it's positive. Um, and uh, there's actually a very powerful theorem by Hammersley and Clifford, and part of the reason that the, we had that Markov name before, um, is that any network model, so if you write down probability of, of a graph depends on some set of statistics, uh, or, or uh, it, it probability graph depends on um, uh, some features of the graph, any network model that you actually write down can be expressed in the exponential family where it counts statistics on the graph. Okay, so this is a, it's actually in an unpublished paper by Hammersley and Clifford, 1971. Um, it's, it's actually a tough theorem uh, to state and um, uh, difficult to prove. Uh, not terribly difficult. There, there, uh, I, I'm not going to go into that here, but the idea is that this is a fairly rich inflexible representation that can capture a lot of things. Now, the theorem, um, it could be that you have to write in a huge number of statistics in order to actually represent a particular model that you have in mind. So fitting every model into this family can be fairly complicated. So it's easy to do erdos reni ones just by looking at links. Um, fitting other kinds of models, if you want to do a full preferential attachment in an exponential form, you actually have to keep track of a number of statistics and, and it, it gets fairly complicated. So it's not saying that this is the right thing, but what it does say is it's a fairly general representation and most other kinds of models can be approximated well by this kind of model, at least in some functional form. Okay, now for this to be a probability, so if we want the, this uh, probability of a graph of a given network arising to be a probability, then when we sum across all graphs, that has to sum to one. So in order for that to be true, if the probability of, of any given graph is proportional to um, an exponential function of its weighted sum of links and triangles, then we're going to have to divide through by that sum over all possible networks in order to normalize that so that when we sum all these things up, it's a probability. Okay. So the exponential form of a uh, given uh, model here is um, the Ergram model is going to be represented in this form, right? For, for this case, for links and triangles. So we've got an exponential function of weighted sum of links and triangles divided through by a summation over how that could work for all possible uh, networks. So um, dividing through this thing uh, we could, you know, bring in, in terms of the exponential function, dividing by something is, is basically a, a subtracting it, so, uh, inside the exponent, so, um, you can, you know, write that as minus c, where c is this, uh, is, is going to be a, 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 part of this expression. Okay. <clears throat> So let's just take a quick look at, um, you know, how would you fit in GNP, the, the erdos reni random network model, into um, an exponential form just to figure out how this works. Um, so the probability of a given graph, so here is number of links in, in G. Um, the probability of a given graph G in uh, erdos reni land is the probability that uh, all of the links that were there formed and all of the links that are not there did not form. 
So it's P raised to the number of links it did form, because that's the probability that each one would form independently. And then each of the ones that didn't form would have had to not form with probability 1 minus P. How many are left are, well, there's N times N minus 1 over 2, right? This is N choose 2. That's the number of total links possible. And the ones that didn't form are that number minus the numbers that did form. So this is the probability of a given graph under Erdos Renyi. Well, you can rewrite that. Um, let's pull the L of G's out. So we get P over 1 minus P raised to the L of a G um, times 1 minus P uh, and, and minus 1 over 2. We can rewrite that as an, exponent, an exponential function. We rewrite that as an exponential function as follows, right? So this is equivalent to exponent of log to get the p1 minus pl of g um, minus log of this extra part. So it looks like um, exponent of some factor where now what's happening is the beta 1 here is capturing this factor times the L of G. So the statistic of the network that we're going to keep track of is how many links it has. And the beta 1 is going to be an expression which in, in this particular model um, is going to be log of the probability of the odds ratios of, of probability of a link being there compared to it not being there. And then we have an extra of thing which is going to be a constant which is a function of the total number of nodes and uh, the overall link probability. Okay, so what we end up with is, you know, you could go through and by estimating um, P, you could get an estimate of what this B beta is, or by you can estimate the beta and that'll give you an idea of the P. So you could write this in, in directly in the erdos renyi form, or you can write it as an exponential random graph model as well. Um, when we want to bring in clustering, now we're going to have some other factors, um, beta, beta 1 and beta 2, and we'll have the probability of a graph be proportional to that. Okay, so um, this is just set up the basic fun functional form for an exponential random graph model. And the next thing we're going to talk about is how you actually go about estimating these functions and, and uh, what, what are some of the challenges associated with doing that.